Today, Amanda will share with us how she and her team have delivered product workshops to over 14,000 cloud engineers since the start of the pandemic, which drives the pipeline and directly impacts sales. So before we chat with Amanda, I think it's relevant for me to tell you a little bit about Instruct because during our conversation with Amanda, she's going to also mention about Instruct. So Instruct is a hands-on virtual IT lab with a browser-based private sandbox environment. It's really easy for people to get familiar with your software in a pre-configured live fully function environment. When you use Instruct, you get to show people a working version of your product with data and scenarios. It's not a simulation or a video of your software. People can dive in, get hands on and try it out. It's a more effective way to help people understand how they can get the most out of your software. You can even customize based on use case, persona, verticals, without depending on your development resources. Instruct helps you drive engagement and help people see the value of your software in the entire customer lifecycle. Software companies use Instruct to create hands-on content like tutorials, documentations, self-service demos, training that results in building millions of dollars in the pipeline. So I hope you get an idea of Instruct and that will also help you to understand our conversation today. Hey, Amanda, I'm really thrilled to speak with you today. Let's start by giving us a background of what you do at HashiCorp. Yeah, so I run all of our field marketing worldwide. So essentially what that is, is all of our regional marketing um, aligned to all of our sales regions in, you know, everywhere we have sales. Okay. And how do events fit into your marketing mix? Yeah, so events are definitely a big part of it. Um, you know, we do everything from workshops to uh, maybe some sort of executive dinner and everything in between to really engage all the different um, account, all the different people we work with within you know, our customers. So before the pandemic, how did your events or your product workshops look like? Yeah, so they were in person, as I think just about, you know, most things were. Um, as you can see from the slide, they were, you know, quite large. They were getting, they've been growing uh, over time and getting quite large right before the pandemic hit. And so we would kind of go on tour with them. We did them in all different cities, you know, across uh, North America, Europe, Asia, and uh, everyone would, you know, sign up in advance. They come, we present them in person, uh, you know, hands-on keyboard, really going through, you know, our actual products like Terraform. And they're usually at least a half day. So, you know, pretty long. And then, um, you know, sometimes something after uh, like a social event. But, um, but yeah, that, the pictures kind of show what they, they used to look like. The last year, when the pits and you suddenly have to re-examine your event strategy. Yeah, so, you know, and also with the workshops, you can see they were really um, growing um, quite a bit and gaining a lot of momentum right before the pandemic hit. And so when when the pandemic did hit, uh, HashiCorp did take a pretty fast action. We actually shut down travel um, before everything really got shut down. So we really had to we were forced to, you know, make some quick decisions of what to do. So you, you know, I basically called an emergency meeting with my team. We sat down um, as the entire team across all the regions and we, we just went line by line things that had been scheduled and looked at, you know, what is it? Um, where is it? You know, how many people have registered? Is it live? And, you know, what does that look like to turn it virtual? And, you know, as we were going through the list, we, we quickly realized, you know, actually, like we can do this virtually. We're we're a remote first company. We've always used Zoom and all the all the tools um, all along. So we we're familiar with all of that. And you know, especially the workshops, we we realized, okay, let's just do it and and you know see what happens. You don't really know until you try. And, and so uh, we flipped everything 
virtually within about probably 48 hours um, and wow. just set messaging right away to people, let them know, hey, here's the Zoom link instead of the address and you know, we'll see you there. <laughs> That's quite uh, quick, 48 hours that you're determined to change the format. So at the beginning, I mentioned the 14,000 attendees since the start of the pandemic. It's really like, wow, a very impressive number of attendees to these product workshops. Uh, maybe can you describe a little bit about the scale of the virtual workshops you have been running since last year? Yeah, definitely. So I'd say over the course of the pandemic, we really tested uh, just how large we could make these, right? What can what can Instruct handle, right? We've been pushing the limits of our team, Instruct everyone to see just how far we can take these. So previously, as you saw in those rooms, you know, our largest ones were probably around 100, maybe we had like, I'm trying to remember, I don't know if we had as many as 150 in, in Amsterdam right before things shut down. But then as we turned virtual, it was kind of, you know, it was a balance of, we work really closely with our solutions engineering team. They're really the ones that lead these and teach these we have TAs that are the SEs on every workshop um, to make sure everyone is getting the assistance they need and the guidance they need. So we want to make sure everyone still had that personalized um, experience. But then also, you know, how many people can we get in a workshop? So we just were careful and made sure we had a lot of uh, SEs. You know, we kind of figured out what's the math of how many people per SE. Um, and kind of just kept pushing, okay, what if we let this many more people in? Let us, what if we let this many more people in and kind of just tested each way if we have this many SEs um, and we were able to keep pushing that upwards that now I think some of our large had 300 people um, at one time, which, you know, that's of course from all different cities all over the world. So you're able to just reach people in a new way. Well, wow, fantastic, fantastic, really impressive. So, um, yeah, you talk about your solutions engineers. I know your team worked very closely with them. Could you describe a little bit how the collaboration works? Yeah, so we are always in lockstep with sales and then in lockstep with the solutions engineering team all along that way. So, you know, I always kind of look at us as we're almost kind of the two pillars supporting sales and, and we really work in a tight partnership. So um, we had, you know, and because they're the technical ones, they're the ones that, you know, teach the workshops. And then also, you know, they were the ones that were able to help us with Instruct. They found Instruct. They said, you know, I think this could be a great way um, to run our workshops. And and Sean Caroline from our team and Lance Larson, they were actually working on this right yet. We were just about to start using Instruct. So it was perfect timing. Um, and again, they jumped in, helped us, you know, walk through everything. Okay, let's test this, you know, how this will look virtually. Um, and things were, you know, pretty seamless as a result of already having Instruct just about set up. So they help us with everything from the content, the presentations, and when, you know, a pandemic hits and you need to suddenly, you know, check all your technology and make sure it's all going to work, they're there to help us. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What is your advice to other marketers on um, how to work closely with their solutions engineers? Yeah, you know, I think it's at the end of the day, we're all one team. We're all going after the same goals. We're all trying to make sure our customers are educated on our products and have a great experience. And that's something that I think marketing, marketing as a whole and the solutions engineering team can really do effectively, right? It's that balance of, you know, the right experience, the right messaging, and then the right content, the right education, um, the right technology. And so that's really where we come together. Fantastic, fantastic. From um, the logistical point of view, are these workshops very different from the physical workshops we saw just now from those pictures? Yeah, you know, they have changed because um, as you saw in those pictures, you know, it's all one big room. Everyone's sitting in there. You know, they have some sort of little desk that they're working on um, and, you know, one presenter in the front. Um, and the TAs would just kind of walk around as they're going through the lessons. Um, but now with it being virtually and with Instruct, what we're able to do is we still kick off 
the workshops in the way we did before, where if there's some sort of presentation, you know, kind of setting the stage, giving a little background on care reform or, or whatever it is we want to focus on. Um, and then going through kind of those lesson plans. But what we're able to do with Zoom now is people then break out into these smaller breakout rooms um, when it's time to do the lab in Instruct. So they have a TA or two TAs in that room with them. And it's a much smaller group. So you get, you know, more uh, conversation and chatter and, you know, questions um, and just a bit more of a, a more intimate experience, right, with a smaller group. And then, and then go back into the main room, do some larger presentation again, go back to the lab, and that's kind of your group through the day rather than you know, one big room. Okay. In terms of the duration of the workshops, do you also have to make some adjustments? You know, that was a big question for us when this hit because they're long. It's a long day. They're usually about a half day, um, and it just, you know, it takes a while for people to to really walk away that day with really learning a good amount of content, feeling like it was, you know, more than just kind of scratching the surface. And so that just takes time. Um, but that, you know, sitting in front of a screen for that long is a different experience. That was definitely a concern of ours. But I think because we found ways to make it a bit more engaging, um, we found that people do want to stay on. It is a good experience and they're happy to spend still a half day going through that full the full length of the content. Um, so there's still about a half day. Okay, that yeah, actually leads me to my next question, right? It's driving engagement at virtual workshops, events. I mean, uh, we're really worried that people get tuned out if they are, you know, staring at the laptop for, you know, hours and hours. So yes. what is your uh, strategy to keep people engaged uh, all the time? Yeah. So um, also some, you know, learning as we kept going, we kept trying, kept trying new things. Again, collaboration with our solutions engineering team, they always come with fresh new ideas also. And so, you know, with them, things we started to do is, you know, even little things like just having some music at the beginning and during um, kind of some of the breaks or some of the more, you know, just working time that everyone's kind of doing their own thing, just having some music playing. Things like that can just make it feel a lot less like static and stagnant and just, you know, um, like that. And then also um, things like raffles or contests, you know, uh, um, maybe some sort of quiz at the end of, hey, <laughs> how much did they learn? Did they remember that thing from lesson two, you know, two hours ago and, and you know, getting some fun prizes and, and things like that. So, um, and definitely, you know, just also having some sort of, more personal element of helping people get to know each other and, and learning who of their peers in their industry are also there. And, you know, mm -hmm. we'll have people change their name um, on the breakout sessions of instead of just Amanda McLeod, we'll say Amanda McLeod, you know, Hashi Corp. So you can see what other companies are there and, and who else mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. So what's the feedback from um, your participants on the hands-on elements of these workshops? Yeah, so those have been um, a joy to read. <laughs> People are quite happy. Um, so we do surveys after every workshop. We can also see through the analytics and instructive, you know, what was the completion? How far did people get? How many people finished? Um, and in the surveys, we've had some, you know, pretty exceptional feedback of things like this is hands down the best, uh, you know, workshop I've ever taken. Um, this was the clearest, um, easiest to follow workshop. Our, the Instruct platform made it a, a lot better experience. I think, you know, a ton of companies are doing various types of workshops out there, various types of trainings. And, you know, I think a lot of people in our industry have, you know, this isn't their first workshop. And so they do have uh, some background and, and they've been really, really enjoying the, this experience. Okay, great. That's really wonderful to hear. Really happy to hear that. So um, maybe looking at the conversion into pipeline, right? You generate maybe a lot of excitement, connection at the events. How do you connect that with like your sales team so that you know you can eventually see the outcome from it? Yeah, question. Because you know, yeah, it's great to get all these people in the room, but if it doesn't really take you anywhere, you know, that's not really our goals. Our goals is uh, to help help our accounts, you know, move faster, understand our products better and, and get signed on faster. So um, these workshops have definitely helped us 
you know, through all the stages of the sales cycle, <clears throat> excuse me, and everything from just getting people, you know, in the door and learning about these products and just being able to kind of dabble in them and experiment with them. Maybe they are somewhere in our sales cycle and um, they're curious about it. They've heard about it. Some people within the account are saying, yes, this is a good thing. It's like, hey, let us give you some hands on experience and you can kind of test it for yourself and see, you know, how it goes for you. Um, and then even, uh, you know, existing accounts, new accounts, um, the most important thing is that they are successful on our products, that they do see the value in our products and that, you know, they get up and running and then they, you know, renew in 12 months. So even for new customers, it's super important that they get this education, um, feel comfortable on the product and, and get up and running. And then, you know, in addition to that, what we'll often do is maybe one person or a few people from an account will attend one of these workshops, but then we can, you know, follow up with them and say, hey, you know, how did it go? Do you, you know, do you want us to come do one with your whole team in the account? You know, this can kind of be that first stage that then helps us continue to, you know, get in further into the account and reach more people. Okay, yeah. So it opens up door to an account. Yes, definitely. To follow up on these. Perfect, perfect. How do you see these hands-on um, product tutorials um, actually be relevant to the entire customer lifecycle? Yeah, so I think, you know, it's kind of, it goes back to that, you know, ultimately we don't just need them to become a customer, but we also need them to renew, which ultimately means, are they using the product? Are they understanding the product? Are they, you know, taking advantage of it and, and fully, you know, realizing that value? And ultimately, that's not, you know, that manager that signed the check. It's all of those engineers that are using those products every day. Um, and that's who attends these workshops, right? It's um, those engineers, those cloud engineers that are running Terraform every day mm -hmm. or, you know, are not using Terraform and, and learning the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's great. So, um, Looking back, what is the one big lesson that you learned from organizing virtual events, Amanda? I would say that they work. You know, it's totally, of course, a different experience than being in the room with each other, right? I can't wait to get back out in the field and be with everyone, but there's also unique advantages to virtual. You know, I think these workshops in particular, um, so many advantages of you know, the timing, right? You mentioned earlier, okay, it's eight in San Francisco. Um, you know, it's afternoon in the East Coast, you know, early evening in Europe. People can kind of then just pick what timing works from the, for them, of, you know, on their day. And everyone has different stuff going on, family, kids, um, various meetings that what works well for them. So now they can kind of choose rather than, hey, this is the one time slot happening in Minneapolis this week. You know, they can choose what time works for them and and make it work and and you know like i said earlier they are long days it's a half day it's a big commitment and so it being virtual and being at home it also just gives people a bit more flexibility of if they need to step out there's a kid running around in the background that they need to go get a snack whatever they need to do they can just take care of that whatever they need to in their home life as well and and come back in and um and just kind of have that balance a bit better so do you think virtual events are here to stay I think so. I think, you know, definitely here to stay. I think the overall picture will probably be some sort of hybrid, um, a mix, but I think they're definitely here to stay. They definitely uh, have their advantages that, that you don't get in person um, that makes them worthy of continuing. Really nice to hear your story about running these product workshops virtually using Instruct Platform. I think in this virtual world, we are no longer limited by distance, cost, or scale because of technology. So you can run workshops where people are engaged, active, and they learn a lot about your products. So when you are able to adjust your mindset and execution, it can offer huge opportunities. So, yes. and that's also the reason why we invite you to share your story today with everyone. So, uh, you. if you are still considering running your workshops virtually, you can actually gain a lot from it. Yeah. So, 
So before we maybe look at some of the questions from the audience, so if you have questions, put it on the comments. Um, I would like to just really briefly, real quick, show everyone a sample track because we talk about these product workshops, but how do they look like? So let me just go to a sample of that. So here, this is on the Instruct platform. You get, give a description of your product. Now, these challenges here, they are small assignments or quizzes, which you use to show people about specific features within your software. We can also make it a playground for people to look around, or you can set up these challenges and turn it into a guided experience. So people can access the sandbox environment right on the browser. They don't need to download or configure anything. And while the sandbox is starting, what you see in front of you, you can add notes to provide the contact to people. So these function more like flashcards to give your users information on what they are going to see and learn. You can also include a video or images here. So if I click the start, that will take people to the sandbox. As you can see, this panel also is resizable. The sandbox environment is entirely customizable. So you can expose different user interface, terminals, code editors, you name it. So here, there will be explanation and instructions for your users, for your participants. And here, I will just quickly go through this one, which the instruction is to install the HashiCorp Terraform extension. So here, it said that click on the extension icons on the bottom left navigation sidebar. So I will come here. And then it says, so I, I'm just following this step by step based on the instruction. Look for HashiCorp Terraform. And then click the install button. So these are all the instructions. So your users will not be lost. Reload required. And then click the icon on the two pages on top of the left side navigation bar so you can see the Terraform files. So now I'm able to complete this assignment to enable syntax highlighting in the code. And then I will click this check button. Now this check button um, takes place where we are inspecting the activities in the sandbox environment. And don't worry if people break it, if they break it, they can start all over again with a fresh brand new sandbox themselves. Our platform works with code-based and UI-based application. If you need to connect with cloud resources, you can get temporary access to an entire cloud project. So I will move on to the next assignment. And here it says that I need to check the version of the Terraform running on your machine. Now, if I decided not to do anything and check, it wouldn't allow me. So here it depends on your content creators if they want to make it very straight or if they allow people to skip a challenge. So for here, I'm not able to skip, so I have to follow the instruction. If I do check, again, it wouldn't let me go because I have not completed all that is required here. So this ensures that people will not be lost. So it is very much a lot of guidance that will help people. So now I'm able to move forward. So the last thing I want to show, because Amanda also mentioned, is about the analytics. Here, I'm just using um, an example from the Instruct, uh, getting with in, started with Instruct statistics. 
Here, uh, the analytics will provide you with rich information on track started and completed, on any specific period that you identify, total number of track starts and completed. At the end of each um, track, actually, the users will be able to also rate if they are happy with um, what they have done there. So you can also track the user happiness. And then you also get to see how many attempts they make per challenge and the duration per challenge. So even help you to improve the content, but at the same time also to gauge how engaged your users are with the content. So I hope this gives you just a rough idea on what the Instruct environment looks like, what kind of learning content you can provide. Awesome. Amanda, thank you. thank you very much for joining us today. Really enjoyed our conversation and learned a lot from you on how to run these virtual product workshops successfully. And I want to thank our audience as well and hope to find the session useful. See you at our next live event. Bye for today.